Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We are here for Chemist Warehouse. Head into Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. Let's begin our round preview. Thanks to Game Day Squad, create, coach, and compete in fantasy footy. So if you love fantasy footy, Game Day Squad is where you get your, your fantasy footy fix. But, Smitty, Roosters versus the Eels, Thursday at Allianz Stadium, 8 o'clock, New South Wales time, or eight, uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings time. Uh, Roosters team news. Joe Manu was out due to suspension. Drew Hutchinson starts at the centre. Corey Allen joins the bench. Eels team news. Junior Paolo will miss the next two weeks due to suspension. Widamu Greg, Greg starts at uh, starts and Jack Murphy joins the bench. How do you see this one playing out, mate? No, oh, it's a good match up again. Two of the heavyweights of the competition. Um, missing some key players, aren't they? Uh, and we're seeing a lot of suspensions early in the year. Um, probably more than what, off the top of my head, more than most previous seasons, I believe. Uh, but I think... You know, Roosters, uh, they're coming off um, a bye. I think they'll be fresh. Although the Eels, they had, they had a tough one, that, that, that one out. And, and, and sometimes that does a lot for your confidence, right? To, to tough one out, uh, Golden Point victory, Mitch Moses now, contract negotiations, all that drama, that's gone, that's out the way. Uh, he can just now concentrate on footy and, and get him back on track and, and, and winning games for the club. But the Roosters, um, yeah... This is, um, I've been sort of, I'm in an ring about this, you know, all week. I'm actually leaning towards the Eels. Mm. I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if that surprises you, Kempi, but I'm, I'm actually leaning towards the Eels. I, I think that will, it'll do them good. I know that's a, it's a huge out, uh, Junior Bolo. He does you know, so much good work for that footy side. You know, he gets through a, a stack of, um, hard stuff, you know, with tackling and tough carries, but also, you know, the just the, the really slight touches that he has of the football in and around the middle of the field when he's connecting with uh, Mitch Moses um, and Dylan Brown in the middle. Um, but I, I still feel that, you know, they can they can get one over the Roosters. Mm. Yeah, look, I, I'm actually going to go to the Roosters. I'm going to go to the Roosters. I think that uh, they got... I think they won their match before the bye. Mm-hmm. Um Things are slowly clicking into gear for him. Joey Manu out. Yeah, that's an out. But look, you look at their back line. Like, seriously. Yeah. yeah it's it's not really. It's in and out. But it, compared to other clubs, it's not with who they can bring in in regards to jo- Suwali. You can pick up a lot of that slack. Uh, so I think the Roosters get the job done. But I do think, because I just think the Roosters forward pack is so big and so aggressive. Without Junior Paolo through the middle there, it's just going to be really hard for the Eels to contain them. Yeah. We've seen uh, Brad Arthur's real reluctance to play, you know, other middles long minutes. Yeah. Uh, opening the season, like Junior Paolo got all the way up to like 66 minutes, yeah, I think, in one game. That's right. Uh, and so that, that to me says that Brad Arthur isn't necessarily confident with the rotation that comes off the bench because mm-hmm. I don't know why you would be playing such a veteran so many minutes early on in the season when it's such a long season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that the forwards will be a bit too much without uh, Junior Polo in it. So I'm going to go the Roosters. Yeah, right. Roosters. Uh, if, if there's one area that I think Parramatta should look at attacking it is in and around um, Hutchison, Drew Hutchison. Now, he's a fantastic player. He's a very versatile player. And it's not the first time he's played centre. Like He's played there a fair bit. Um, he's certainly capable. But I just feel defensively, if he, feel, if he feels as though he's under under pressure or a little bit vulnerable out there on the edge. He tends to, you know, try to, you know, for the, for the, for the lack of speed that he has um, countering the opposition center, he tries to jam a lot and come out of the line to cut off the play. So if they can, and I'm sure Brad Arthur and the coaching staff at Parramatta have looked at that and particularly, you know, someone like Mitch Moses, they, they would have looked at, looked at those opportunities in and around Drew. Um, that's that's where I feel that Parramatta may be able to get some opportunities or some cracks in the Roosters' defence out on that out on that edge. Because he'll be on the right edge where Joe Joe Mundy's the right. So yep, that will be that'll be Would Dylan be, Brown, I think. Yeah, it might be which Dylan. A, yep, which is the last person you want to be jamming in on. Yeah, that's what I mean. Literally. So you're gonna have you're gonna have Brown there. Yeah, he'll have he'll have a back row punching hard in and around that that space around Drew um, with. You know, Gutho out the back, and we know that you know they've got they've, they've got sharp feet, but they've got really good hands on that left hand side of the field too, Parramatta. So it could be a real target for them um, Thursday night. 
Now, on to Raiders versus Panthers. Uh, Friday, 6 p.m. at GIO Stadium. Raiders team news. Jordan Rapana, Jamal Fogarty returned, but Jackie Whiten is out due to suspension. The great Matty Frawley, who says, you can do it clearly, I can do it better. He keeps his spot in the starting <laughs> side. Club legend Jared Croker is on extended bench and could play his first game of the season. Panthers, Luke Garner is out with an injury, which is interesting because the last I read Luke Garner was being rested, but now mm. it says out with an injury. The reason why it's interesting is because... Um, when I was at the Warriors, I also got rested. Uh, and I, so Ivan Cleary <laughs> came up to me. He was like, mate, we're just going to rest you. And I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. Anyway, we're at the airport. I was like, oh, okay, that's really nice. I am feeling a little bit tired. Anyway, so I sat on it for a bit. Then I went back. I was like, hang on a sec. Wait a minute. I was like, <laughs> went back to him. I said, am I getting rested or dropped? <laughs> and he was like, oh, well, you know, uh, anyway. It's a rest. Then, it's a rest yeah. either way. Either way, you're resting, matter, right? And then the rest is history. I basically barely played again for the Warriors. Um, so I'm not saying that's happened with Ghana. I'm just saying that it was an interesting little thing. Uh, Scott Sorensen starts in the second row, which is interesting because they have been reluctant to have such an impact player mm. come on the field when sometimes it would look like the obvious answer to put Scott Sorensen there. But a huge opportunity for Sorensen. Liam Martin's still out with a hamstring injury. Sonny Luke is out with a concussion. Tyron Peachy joins the bench. How do you see this game going, mate? Uh, this will be a good good game again. Uh Raiders getting another opportunity at home in front of their faithful. I, I think Panthers too strong, um, considering uh, Jack's out. Jack Whiten is out, suspended. Um, great to see Jared Croker named on the extended bench. How long since he played? Long, long oh, time. Mate. A year, season. Long, long time. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate that you know his body sort of has let him down over the back end, part of his career. Um, just a, been a wonderful player for Canberra for a long time. Um, Sonny Luke, though, he's he's had a hot start to his career at, uh, in first grade with the Penny Panthers. I think he's another big out. Um, I, I think we'll see Tyrone Peachy spend a little bit of time at nine um, with Mitch Kenny, of course, starting like he has done for the start of this year and the back end of last year with the Penrith Panthers for that final series. Uh, but, yeah, I, look, I, I, think, I think Penrith will be much too strong for the Raiders, although they... They've got this. They've got this knack of 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 dragging teams, particularly the quality footy sides, dragging them into this style of footy that just makes them uncomfortable. They've got a knack of doing it. They've they've done it for a long time, um, you know. And and Ricky's that type of coach, and we've said it many times on the captain's run. He's just got he's got that ability to upset or get under the skin of the quality sides and and take them away from what what is their best footy. Yeah, I agree with you. The Raiders, they just have this tendency, almost like a chip on their shoulder. They go to the big teams and say, you know, how dare you think you're better than us, which you'd love to see it. That's what rugby <laughs> yeah. league's all about. Um, I will say, though, with the um, with the Raiders, I, I understand you can be traditionally slow starters. I understand that, you know, that's just part of rugby league. Some people start slow, some people don't. But I think they've got to get moving soon, the Raiders. They yeah. can't afford to just be battling away. The only reason they made the eight last year, yes, it was their form, for sure. Like, mm. good on them for going on that late run. Yeah, but it was, it was more because the Broncos were it, terrible. It was other results. Yeah. And so you don't want to be in the position where you're basically, here he is. Brian Fletcher is walking in. He can't help himself. He's walked Fletcher. in the studio to pester me. Oh, we're talking about Raiders. We're talking about the Panthers, mate. <laughs> That's mini gun. Yeah, mate, he's great. He's absolutely great. Who Just, wins, Raiders or Panthers? Panthers. Panthers, by how much? 14, so it's 13 plus. Are we, are we allowed to do that? He's had a little wager on it. Surely, Fletch. He's had a wager. <laughs> <laughs> Any danger of you coming to Sydney? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you know the big dog doesn't come down to Sydney much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go now. All right. Thanks for that. That's a great Ryan Fletcher. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, right, mate. No worries. No worries. <laughs> nice uh, little, s- mate, we, should, we should get him on. We should get him on one, one week. Yeah, like absolutely. officially, rather than just walking in the middle of our show. Absolutely, we've got to get the Fletch on. <laughs> absolutely, um, but I think the Panthers win, and I think they win well because I, 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 the only the only concern, as you mentioned, was where do they get the creativity around the ruck. Mm. Hopefully, Peachy can give them that. But yep. I think it's an opportunity for Cleary and Law to say, okay, we don't have the same creativity. It's yep. on us to make that creativity yeah. around the ruck. Yeah. Well, with Peach. Um, coming on you know, as, as a utility nine, I, I think he'll just be looking to run the footy, Kempi. I, I think mm. he'll just get his big forwards, you know, Fisher-Harris and 
Big Moses just say, hey, boys, just knock knock some defenders over for me, get some quick play balls, and I'm away. He likes that style of footy. He likes mm. that you know, unstructured ad-lib footy where he just gets the ball, takes off, and he's a strong ball carrier. Um, and and then you know guys like Luai and, and Cleary, that's they they love that stuff too. They just like quick play the balls, away we go. Everyone pushing forward, run into the space. We'll we'll make the right decision with with our passes. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Sen League Captain's Run NRL on Twitter, and also we're on TikTok at Sen League. But we've got the Rabbitohs versus Storm Friday 8 p.m. at a core stadium. Rabbitohs team news: Harme Sele returns on the bench from concussion. Storm team news. Eisenhuth joins the bench to replace Tyron Wishart. Smithers, how do we see this going, mate? Yeah, this is a big test for the Storm. They um, Well, they got past the West Tigers, as we know, in Melbourne on the weekend, 24 points to 12. Uh, still far from their best footy. Still far from their best footy. Um, I think Craig Bellamy was... Well, he, he was much more pleased with their effort on the weekend compared to the previous week against the Titans, where he, remember he questioned whether they cared about their football. Um, so it was good to see them bounce back with a, a a performance that, you know, wasn't pretty at times, but they, they toughed it out and got a win. Um, the Rabbitohs, of course, they're, they're going along nicely, uh, but still... I don't believe it. I mean, we mentioned earlier about the Rabbits. Uh, I don't think we've seen their best either, particularly from some of their, their key individuals. Like, when, when you look at Cody Walker and when you look at Luttrell, when, the, when they impose themselves on the game, they make such a difference, mm. such a difference to their footy side. Like, everyone just it, – it looks like they just grow in confidence. They, they feel a foot taller um, and they can go out there and do anything. But then at times you're like, hang on a minute, like, I haven't seen them touch the ball for five minutes. Mm. I just don't know why they, they, they sort of float in and out of games the way they do because of, um, sorry, when they have so much influence on their footy side. Um, you know, whereas you got have a guy like Lachlan Elias. Like he, he, is, he is up on the ad line all the time, looking for the footy, wants the footy in his hands. So I, I still feel like those two guys could, they could have, you know, much more say on, on their performances um, you know, week to week. And I'm just, that's why I, I said earlier, Kempi, about this one, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about it because they are two players that love playing the big games and this is a huge matchup against Melbourne. Yeah, it's a massive matchup. I, it's, uh, I agree with you in regards to Trell and Cody. Like, when they went on their, you know, grand final run, especially mm. Cody, like, he was in everything, absolutely everything. Uh, and you're right, it's, as soon as they step into the game, the game changes. Mm. It, it's almost like, and and the power to have that, like to have that power as a player, it's rare. Like it's rare to be able to go. You know what? I need to change a game, and boom, the game changes. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, just looking at the the individual matches mat, matchups here, um, Jonah Pezzett, of course, he's wearing the number seven. Uh, Jerome Hughes, he's out for another week on the sideline. Of course, the Storm contested that that uh, late hit charge. Uh, that he that he copped against the Titans. So he got an extra week. He got two weeks. So Pezzett takes the seven jersey again. Um, he's making some small improvements week on week. I thought his defense was a lot stronger last week. But he takes on Lockie Elias. Um, another young man. He, he's got a bit more, a few more games under his belt and, and a bit more experience. So that'll be a good test for Jonah. Walker and Munster. That's probably the best one of the whole game. But now looking at the forwards... Yeah, you know, sort of Cook and Harry Grant, both Origin hookers. They sort of they they pretty much cancel each other out. But maybe maybe the Bunnies have a slight advantage in the forward pack, Kempy. Mm. Um, you know, when you look at particularly experience, like Christian Welsh and Tommy Burgess, you know, sort of you know cancel each other out. But then you look at the back row, um, Jacob Host um, and Kaloa Matangi versus you know guys like Trent Liero and Eli Katoa. Two young men for the Melbourne Storm um, playing in the back row, whereas those two guys, particularly um, Keon Kaloa oh, Matangi, yeah. I, I, I think yeah you know, he's having a, such a great season. A, uh, well, a, a great start to the season. Been really impressed with the way he's been playing. Um, and then you add Cameron Murray, the, the the captain at lock. Maybe that's a slight advantage to um, the Rabbitohs. And of yeah. course, you know Latrell Mitchell at the back against Nick Meaney. Um, you know, very few people can say that, you know, they've sort of got one up on Latrell, but Nick Meany will go out there and, and do his best. Look, I'm going to back Melbourne, 
Um, they too enjoy these big matchups. You know, Craig Bellamy, he 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 loves challenging his footy sides when they're coming up. You know, one of one of the big guns of the competition. Um, they've had some pretty good results against the Rabbits up in Sydney. I, I think if you look over the last, and I know this team is a very different team to the past, but historically they've got some pretty good results against um, the Rabbitohs um, of late. So I'm going to back the Storm in, um, but if if they are to win, I think it'll be a, a, quite a small margin. Yeah, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on, on the Storm and where they're at at the moment because... In yesteryear, if there was injuries and all of that kind of stuff, mm. you could always go, look at these young guys coming through and, yeah. you, the, you know, this the next big thing. And I know you've got guys like Holworth and Pezzett coming through, but, you know, if I'm being totally honest, mm. I, I, this is... I've got to say, roster-wise, it's probably the weakest I've ever seen the Storm and, and not weak in that they're not good players at all. I'm yeah. not saying that at yeah. all. I'm just saying, compared to yesteryear the top 30 for the, the Storm and the guys coming through were honestly like the next, yeah. you know, Israel, Greg Inglis, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's your, is that, am I am I totally off the mark here, Smithy, or what are your thoughts? No, I, mate, I tend to agree with you. I think if you look at the, the best lineup for the for the Storm, it's it's as good a side as any in the competition. Um, they they still have a, a host of players um, out with injury. Um, and, and one of those, I think, that haven't, Really got too much of a mention, um, being big Nelson and Sofa Solomon. I think it's yep. it's had a huge impact on that footy side, mm. with him not being in the in the team. Um, they've had a couple of suspensions also that they've dealt with, but I, I do agree with you. I think if if there's ever been a time where Storm has been vulnerable, it's been this year with with the the entire makeup of 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 their squad. I think you know when you talking about you know Storm teams of the past. If you looked at the top 17 or 18, they were it's a very good football side. But then the next, you know, 10 players, they were they were um, they will walk up seven top 17 players at any other club. Mm. Whereas you look at you know those guys at, at the Storm now, you know, there's been a, a handful of guys that have been handed, um, you know, their debut jerseys. Um, they may have played one or two games either in previous seasons or at other clubs. So there's a lot of inexperience at that club at the moment. And over the last couple, it's it's sort of the, the squad average age is becoming younger and younger every year. So it's a very different looking side. And I, I made the comment, um, you know, early in, in the week, or it might have been the end of last week, Kempi, um, that, you know, the hardest thing for Melbourne right now is that, like, everyone, and even I do sometimes, you still judge this current, so the 2023 Melbourne Storm side on previous Storm teams. You know, just because of, you know, they've been at the top of their game for so long, okay? Mm. But but it's not fair on this group. It is, it is entirely unfair on this group to judge them on, say, you know, like the, the 2012 Storm, the 2017 Storm, the 2020 Storm. They, they were completely different sides that were full of experienced players. Mm. Whereas at the moment, yes, we've got some elite players still involved with the Melbourne Storm, but there's a lot of guys that are just starting out their career and learning about being what it, what it means to be and, and what it takes to be regular first graders. Yeah, great insight, Smithy. Great insight. Now, let's head to the, the Sea Eagles versus the Knights. Saturday, 3 p.m. at Glen Willow Oval in Mudgee. So, you know, technically a home game for Manly, but, you know, basically a away game for both. Sea Eagles, uh, Morgan Harper replaces Tolu Kola at centre. Lachlan Croker returns at hooker. Mm. Carl Lawton moves to reserves. Jack Johns for Newcastle replaces Kurt Mann at lock, who was out with concussion. How do you see this game playing out? It would have been good if Cooper Johns was playing for the Seagulls. It would have been oh, brothers. Stop it. match up. Put him on the edge too, right? Well, it just would have been a bit of a G up. Although, no, Jack Johns, he's, he doesn't muck around like Cooper. He, he gets in and has <laughs> him. I'm only joking. I'm only joking, Coops. He, he's, he loves his footy as well. Um, yeah, look, I, I think Manly too strong in this one. I, I think... Uh, Lachlan Croker coming back um, is is huge for Manly. Um, although Carl Lawton is um, he's done some you know, great stuff for them with Lachlan out. He's he's been out with suspension. He he has been he has been an unsung hero for Manly over the last couple of years. Massively, um, Lachlan Croker. Geez, he's a good player. He's just mm. he just gets in and rips in and does some fantastic stuff for them. I know they've got some big name players, the Trebojevic brothers um, and DCE. Uh, but you know he is just as important to that footy side as those players, those other players I mentioned. I think Manly. 
I think Manly in this one, mate. I, I just think they continue on. You know, they 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 just went down on the weekend, but um, prior to that, you know, unbeaten. They've had a bye. They're still r- really fresh. Um, I like the way Schuster's been playing. Um, he's a crafty, skillful young man. I think um, I think Manly. Yeah, it's uh, this is going to sound a bit bizarre, but it's a bit of a danger game for Manly. And why I say it's a danger game is because you've had such a good start to the season. Mm. You lose against the Rabbitohs by a point, and you know, you, 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 in your back of your head, you could be sitting there going, "Oh, the forward pass, and we should have won it." Yes. And then you go, "All right, well, you tell yourself we're one of the top tier sides in the comp. You go to play Knights, who are struggling right now, although they had a good win on the weekend. They're struggling. If you if you drop this game." You know, all of a sudden that confidence can just get completely shattered where yep. you go, oh, holy, maybe we're not as good as we are. So I think it's a really important test for Manly to go, regardless of who we're playing, we keep our standards and keep the momentum. Yep. As you know, Smitty, momentum is so important in his footy season. Oh, it's huge, mate. And and I think, like, you know, going along the lines of what you're just talking about there, this this is a game for Manly that they, with all due, due respect to Newcastle, their preparation and their mindset for this one is... I, this is a game that we must win, mm. okay? And we do that by, you know, whatever they've prepared to do with their game plan and whatever they've put together to to try and um, pick apart Newcastle. But they need to approach this game like they're they're playing any other like like they would if they were playing Penrith or mm. you know the Broncos or Storm or Rabbitohs, whatever it is. They need to go. Hey, this game is a must win for us. We need to go up there and win because. In turn, they get the two points for that. And then also, it's good preparation for next week as well. I know, you know we don't always like looking too far down the track, but they take on Penrith the week yep. after. So they need to take some momentum and some confidence, as you mentioned, Kempi, into next week as well. Absolutely. And uh, and just with the Knights, just I think that the main thing they need to focus on is, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough challenge, but it's like what Wayne, Wayne has said with the Dolphins all year is like, we are going to make every game a fight. Yep. Whatever we do, doesn't matter what the result is, it's going to be a fight. Yep. Um, and I think that's what the Knights need to do. Yeah. Just make they, – they just need to get out there. Like, they have nothing to lose. Like they're, mm. you know, they're sitting 12th at the moment. I know we're still early days in the competition, but like you, you were mentioning um, you know, before with, with the Raiders, like you can't wait too long in this comp to start putting some wins together. So no matter who they're playing, it, it it shouldn't be about oh you know we're playing this team or we're playing that team and we'll get up for that one and we should win this one. Hey, like every game is hey boys, we need to be at our very best. Yep. So if we if we aren't to win it, if we aren't to win it, whoever we are playing, we've made them earn it. Yeah, they don't just walk over us. Welcome back to the captain's run. The Schnitties have arrived. The oh, has arrived. I can hear it, Kempi. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> I can hear mate. It in your voice. Absolutely beautiful. Also, we are back thanks to Chemist Warehouse. Deals every day. Thank you to Chemist Warehouse for jumping in on board. But let's get straight into it, Smithy. The Dragons v. the Dolphins. Saturday, 5.30 p.m. at Wynn Stadium. Dragons. Jack DeBellum has been named in the extended squad. Could play his first game of the year. Dolphins. Isaiah Katoa. Mm. Milford are, new, are the new halves with Sean O'Sullivan out with a peck. Debutant. Jack Bostock replaces Tessie New on the wing. Jeremy Marshall King returns to suspension. How do we see this playing out, Smithy? <laughs> Um, well, believe it or not, the Dragons are favourites for this one. Just slight favourites, I guess, being at home um, and with the Dolphins, you know, missing still um, a handful of players. Felice Cafusi still out, of course. Big in, though, Jeremy Marshall King. Um, he's sat out the last couple of weeks due to suspension. Uh, I thought his start of the year was outstanding. Big reason why the Dolphins got away to such a good start. Particularly against the Roosters, he, he absolutely carved that that footy side apart. He set up two tries uh, for the Dolphins. Um, Dragons, though, they'll be. I'd like to think that yeah. We, when we touched on the Dragons earlier, mate, like I'd like to think that they'd be pretty disappointed coming off last week's game and and the way the way in which they played in particular. Uh, forget the scoreline, forget all that. You know, you can be embarrassed by scorelines, but they should be disappointed with the effort that they put in. And, and Ben Hunt, we, we spoke about that as well. The captain said as much. Just It just wasn't up to standard. It wasn't up to standard of NRL players um, that they dished out against the Sharkies. They get another opportunity at home. They're playing at Wynn Stadium, which I think they do prefer to play at um, for some reason, this footy side. And if there's ever a, an opportunity to knock off a team... You know, sitting in the top four, 
Um, I think the Dragons, this might be the week for them with, you know, Katoa, Milford, new combination uh, playing in the half. Sean O'Sullivan been so influential as well for the Dolphins in the first month. Um, he's out, as we know, for an extended period of time with his injured pectoral muscle. Um, and Tessie New, of course, you know, with the knee injury as well. So big, big, uh, big stat for this game, though, boys. Big one for the Dolphins. Uh, it's their captain, Jesse Bromwich. It's his 300th NRL game. Wow. So that's, wow. Um, you know, it's, you know, putting milestones aside, you know, you want to go out there and, and play well every time you get an opportunity to get on the ground and play. But, you know, I, I'm sure all the players, and, I, and I'm, I'm almost certain that Wayne would have touched on the occasion uh, that is 300 games for Jesse. There's very few players. When you think about the amount of people that have played our great game, very few players have had the opportunity to play 300. It's uh, it's it's honestly, it's almost like an honesty game for the Dragons because mm. they're playing a Dolphin side that's down on troops, and basically, there's no excuse of. Oh, you know our roster isn't as good, and because like a lot of the knock on the dragons is 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 an aging roster, roster and rah rah. Yeah. Whereas the dragons, if they go into this game, and they can't manage to win, it is a hundred percent evidence that is pure attitude and and the mentality that they're going in with. Because on paper, they are better than this this uh, dolphin side, mm. and this dolphin side has shown the rest of the NRL that on paper you may not need all the superstars. Uh, like other teams, it's just about ripping in for each other. And so yeah. it's like, it's almost, I know it's a must win for the Dragons because what happened last week, but mm. it's, it's it's almost an honesty game for them to say, how fair dinkum are we here, guys? Because seriously, we should not be getting beaten by a new club with this many outs. Yeah, that's right. And and, and for the Dragons, they, they almost, each player needs to take it personally. So they need to sit down and have a look at the team sheets, <clears throat> the team list of the opposition and go, right, who am I matched up with? And will he, at the end of the game, have played a better game than I have? Will I outplay him or will he outplay me? And the more the more players on the Dragons side that can finish the game having outplayed their opposition, you would think that that, that gets them a victory. Like you said, mate, like it, this, is a, this is a week for them to just to be upfront and honest with themselves and say... I'm going to take this personal. I'm going to go out there and outplay my opposing uh, player. And, you know, on the Dolphin side of things, it's, um, it's. You know, I mean, look, what a test it is for them right now. Seriously. Mm. You know, I think they've done better than anyone could have expected, even with the outs that they've had. You know, Jeremy yep. Marshall King out, Kofusi out. Yep. Last week, they were incredible to stay in the game. Yep. But it's just about... All right, boys. Okay, we've got a bunch of outs, yep. but what is, what is the standard that we are trying to set for the year? Yeah, oh, mate. I don't think I don't think they changed their mindset at all to what we've seen in the, in the first couple of weeks. Particularly like when Felice was ruled out. Right, there's a big um, there's a big brouhaha about him not being there and what that how that's going to affect the side. It started. It, it, Wayne Bennett started the message the first day when he he did a press conference the day after um, Felice was ruled out. He just said, "Look, that's." He's got four weeks. We understand that. So we got to get him on, get on with what we can control. We got to get on with playing footy. We know we know he's not here for the next month. We've accepted that. So we just got to do what we what we can with the players that we have. So I, I believe that you'll you'll see a very similar performance from the Dolphins this weekend uh, to what we've seen in the the first four weeks. Now on to Broncos versus Tigers. Now. The Broncos mm. might be sitting at the top of the table, Smithy. Yes. They've had no changes this week. No changes to the starting 13 for Tigers, except mm. Dane Laurie, uh, Safarth, and Sean Bloor drop off the bench. Jake Simpkin, uh, Matamua, and Tof- Toa join the bench. Now, the Broncos are in... It's great. They've started the year. They're four from four. Yep. But if you actually watch the games and see their completion rate, see the fact that they don't build pressure early in games, see the fact that for 70 minutes the Dragons were in it, mm-hmm. you know... Uh, for 75 minutes to 78 minutes, the Dolphins could have won it. Yes. They need to start sorting out the tough stuff immediately because eventually a lot of the other sleeping giants giants in this comp are going to come up against the Broncos, and if they put up those performances against them, they're going to get smacked. Yeah, mate, I, I tend to agree with you because you know, I worked on that game last week, the, the Dolphins and the Broncos, and you know, it was a wonderful occasion. You know, 51,500 people 
But on the performance alone, uh, uh, the Broncos, they're flying high at the moment. Okay, they're flying high. They're unbeaten. They're sitting at the top of the ladder. They haven't had that number one position for a long, long time in this in, in um, the NRL comp. Now, we are only a month in, but we've spoken about this many times, haven't we? Winning, right, and, and putting together, you know, clumps of wins at times can, it can mask a few little things in your game that you're not doing so well. And if you sort of, if you, if you look at that game on the weekend, so testing you does his medial about 10 minutes into the game. He stays on the field, plays out 70 minutes, pretty much on one leg. They then lose uh, Nick Arima in the first half. He comes on um, and replaces Teague uh, at nine. Cops a face, um, facial injury, I think from Katoni Staggs, goes off the field, doesn't return. So they're down to, you know, 16 men. Let's call it 15 and a half with Tessie News one leg. Uh, they then lose uh, O'Sullivan in the most crucial part of the game, what was it, about 10 minutes to go? I think he come off with a peck injury. Uh, Milford was playing his very first game of the year in first grade as well. And yet it took him until the last minute of the game to get a fortunate bounce for Katoni Staggs, not taking anything away from Katoni um, with his effort to beat you know three or four defenders and, and run the length of the field. It took them that long to do it. Now, a lot of people would say, well, look, you know, it's a tough effort. They hung in there. But the thing that I think we're trying to get to here is that, you know, I think it's important that that the, the, the Broncos footy side need to acknowledge some of the things that they aren't doing so well also to be able to rectify that. Because like you said, you know, when you're winning and you're winning and you're winning, sometimes you're just like, oh, yep, that little play there, that doesn't matter, or that little effort where I just I stopped running and you know that that play I made a bit of a half break we made a tackle that doesn't matter that does catch up with you and what it does do it creates bad habits so I think I think when you when you break it down that way outside of just looking at the the result overall I think when you break it down you know maybe Broncos aren't traveling as well as everyone thinks they are although the one the one thing you cannot take away from them is that you know they're winning yeah. They're winning, okay? They're winning. They're sitting atop the ladder, and that's a great spot to be. There's there's 16 other footy sides that would love to be where they are right now. But, you know, there's there's thing you've got to constantly be on top of your game. And you always got to be, no matter the results, you've got to be looking for those things that you're not so good at and trying to improve them every week. As a Broncos person, mate, like, you know, you, you, you've said it yourself that you've seen a couple of things, a couple of areas of their game that they need to address quickly yeah no oh, absolutely it's because that's how you go on these you go on these great runs and then all of a sudden everything falls apart look at mm. last year you know why because we hadn't set standards that we go into a game and we meet these standards regardless of result every week yep. and right now it's incredible what the boys are doing well done 100 percent. i'm stoked i'm so happy that we're at the top of the table but we're relying on our superstars in these big moments to come up with big plays to win matches mm. when we really should be relying on our systems, our principles, and our standards. The boys can do it. The exciting thing for Broncos is if it does click, all of a sudden we're premiership threats. Yeah. What about what about your bogey team? Tigers. No, the Tigers are a bogey team. <laughs> oh, man, please don't do it to us. If it clicks, can they beat the Broncos? <clears throat> I, I, I think so for sure. Look, last year we were flying high. I think we'd just beaten the Eels, doing everything right, and then boom, Tigers came up to Suncorp the sp that won the spoon last year That's and right. beat us by a substantial margin. So yep. very, very. Uh, it's not going to be as simple as us rocking up and just getting the victory. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Uh, Sharkies v. the Warriors, Sunday, 4 p.m. at Points Bet Stadium. Uh, Trindle replaces Oregon Kofusi on the bench, who is out with concussion. Warriors team news, Ronald Ronald, um, Ronald Volkman replaces Tomato Martin in the halves, who is out with concussion. Wade Egan returns from concussion, and Freddie Lussick moves to the reserves. How do you see this game playing, Smithy? I've got, I've got the Sharkies winning this one, mate. As impressed as I've been with uh, the Warriors, they've probably been... Oh, let's just take the Dolphins out of the equation. Mm. Uh, I think the Warriors, for me, have been the most impressive uh, team to start the year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, been very good. Um, even in uh, yeah the the game that they they lost, I, I think they were well and truly in it. I've I've seen some good great things. They they look happy and settled, don't they? Yeah. 
yeah. you can tell that they're back home and they're around their family and friends and they're in their own beds. Um, you know, the, the staff is, they'd be getting, um, you know, they'd be doing much better work with their, with the players too, being at home and being settled. Um, packed house, as I said the other week in front of their home friends, um, in, in Auckland, I just think the Sharkies, though, with with the mayor of the Shire, Nico Hines, uh, pulling the strings once again, I, I just think they might be a little bit too strong for the Warriors. Although this is a good game on on paper, it's a, it's a good matchups all over the place. Fourth, the Warriors v six the Sharks. I think Sharkies at home. Yeah, look if if Nico Hines didn't come back and absolutely you know blow everyone out of the water, I would say. You know, very hard to choose here, but the form that Nico Hines is in, and you know, the interesting thing about the Sharks game last week was the first half. Mm. You know, terrible completion rate, and I don't know what Fitzy said to him, said to the boys at half time, but they came out and was like, "All right, let's build some pressure, let's stop carrying on and trying to throw offloads and all that kind of stuff." As soon as they started completing, they literally looked unstoppable. So yep. if they go into the game with the same attitude against the Warriors, it's going to be very hard to go with the, the Sharkies from a Warriors perspective. Yep. I will say, though, that the Warriors have been playing a kind of footy that may frustrate the Sharks, you know, by hanging in the game, you know, not like... I mean, let's put it this way. You know, the Sharkies are an attacking, you know, machine. Yes. But the Warriors managed to frustrate the Roosters even. And yep. I understand that they lost to the Roosters, but they had opportunities to win that game and they bombed a couple of tries that they should have scored at the end of the game. Mm. So I think this is going to be a, a better, a closer match than some may expect. Yep. Um, now, on to the Bulldogs versus Cowboys. Who you got here, mate? Uh, look, I think I've got the Bulldogs uh, because they're at home Very quick. and uh, there's so many changes with the Cowboys. Tuolungi, uh, Tamao, Shibasaki, they're all out due to injury. Of course, Jeremiah Nanai, classy back rower, young back rower. He's out with suspension. Um, Helam Luki, he's starting at back row. He's a good young player. Um, and Riley Price, Young back rower with the Cowboys. Of course, his old man, Steve Price, Queensland legend. Um, he'll be making his debut, I think, off the bench. So, big game for, for Riley. Hope he goes well. I think the doggies at home, though. Too strong. Okay. Now, uh, that was our round preview. Thanks to Game Day Squad. Create, coach, and compete in fantasy footy. Be the coach and win. Play now. After the